Hydraulic whaler frames and trench sheeting provide a versatile system of supporting medium-sized trenches in most ground conditions. They're particularly suitable for supporting trenches in urban environments where positive ground support is required and there are likely to be pipes and cables crossing the trench. A further benefit is that being relatively lightweight, whalers can be handled by smaller 180 degree excavators. The following video sequence shows the installation of two types of whaler, a light duty aluminium unit and a heavy duty steel unit. This installation indicates a typical dig and push sequence. The benefits of using a vibratory hammer to pre-drive the trench sheets is also shown. Whaler frames comprise of two fixed length support rails strutted apart by a minimum of two hydraulic rams. Longer rails can incorporate a centre strut for additional strength. Whaler frames are used in conjunction with steel trench sheets to form a system of trench support. This type of system can be used to support trenches generally up to 4 metres wide by 6 metres deep in all types of ground conditions. In trenches greater than 4 metres deep, it is advisable to have a system designed by a qualified engineer to determine the strength and spacing required of the frames. It is essential for the supervisor to be familiar with the equipment by first thoroughly reading the user guide supplied by Groundforce with the higher documentation. The frame is assembled by attaching the hydraulic cylinders to the side rails using either nuts and bolts or pins and clips. The cylinder pads are rotated to line up with the holes in the second rail which is placed on top and secured as before. Aluminium frames can be assembled to either collapse with a scissor action. This is a useful feature if frames need to be narrowed to be lowered down through the upper frames. Alternatively, they can be assembled in a rigid format which is preferable for a single frame or propped cantilever installations. If used in the scissor format, as illustrated here, great care must be taken to avoid trapping fingers at pinch points. Swapping between fixed and collapsible configurations is simply achieved by rotating the cylinder pads through 180 degrees. Steel whaler frames are assembled in a similar manner utilising shoe attachment plates bolted to the rails. The width of the trench is first marked out and is ideally defined by staking down timbers, particularly if the ground is loose near the surface. Excavation commences until a depth of about one metre is reached over the length of the support. Note only a five metre length of trench is demonstrated here. A four-leg lifting chain is attached to the handling points on the whaler rails and to the excavator bucket. The frame is lowered into the excavation to initially sit on the base of the dig. In this sequence, the frame acts as a guide for the trench sheeting and therefore needs to be approximately 100 millimeters narrower than the excavated trench. The frame width is adjusted as necessary. A quick release shackle is attached through the hole in the top end of the trench sheet. The shackle pin is locked in position and the sheet is lifted and placed in the trench at one end of the whaler frame. The sheet is supported manually and the shackle is released by pulling the release cord. Using the end of the excavator arm or the flat face of the bucket, the sheet is pushed into the ground ensuring it is plumb in both vertical planes. This procedure is repeated until all four corners are supported in the same way. Please note that great care must be taken to avoid trapping fingers during this operation. To expand the frame, a two-way hose bridle is attached to the quick-release hydraulic couplers on the cylinders. The delivery hose from the bridle is connected to the hydraulic hand pump. The safety lock-off valve is opened on each cylinder to allow fluid to flow freely when the pump is operated. The frame is now pressurised against the corner sheets. Once a firm initial pressure is achieved, no more than 1000 psi, the lock-off valves are closed. The pressure is released at the pump and the hoses can be removed. The protective caps should be refitted to all the couplers to keep them clean. Restraining chains are now hooked over the top of the trench sheets and attached to the handling points on the whalers with the shackles taking out as much slack in the chain as possible. The chains will prevent downward slippage of the frame as work proceeds. 
In this demonstration, the aluminium whaler is installed above the steel unit to form the top frame. Installation by this method avoids the sometimes tricky operation of lowering frames through one another, particularly in narrow trenches. The hydraulic hoses are attached, the lock-off valves opened and the frame expanded as before. The frame is adjusted for level before final pressurisation of approximately 1000 psi. The valves are locked off, the hose is removed and protective caps replaced. Installation of trench sheets now continues ensuring that a close lapped joint is achieved between each sheet. In good ground it may be possible to hit and miss the sheets but this needs to be assessed by a competent person. After the initial push into the ground it is advisable to use a driving cap whilst pushing the sheets to avoid damage to the top edge of the sheeting. The sheets are ideally towed in ahead of the dig at all times to prevent them kicking in. Excavation continues by digging between both frames. Edges and corners of the dig can be manually trimmed as required as the excavation is now safe to allow operatives to work inside it. Once the level of the next frame has been reached by the dig and push operation, lifting chains are reattached to the lower frame and the weight taken. Hydraulic hoses are connected to the couplers and the lock-off valves opened. This will effectively depressurize the frame by allowing fluid back into the pump reservoir. The frame is lowered to sit at the lower level of the trench, leveled up and repressurized as before. The restraining chains are readjusted for length and reattached either to the sheet tops or the upper frame. An excavator mounted vibratory hammer is demonstrated here to show how effective this method of sheet installation is. Once work has been completed within the excavation, frame removal is basically a reverse of the installation process. This commences by first placing and compacting backfill material to the underside of the lowest frame. The lifting chains and the hoses are reattached, lock-off valves opened and hydraulic cylinders retracted. The lower frame is raised and secured in a temporary position just below the top one. Alternatively, if sufficient clearance exists, it can be manoeuvred through the upper frame and out of the excavation. Backfilling and compaction continues to the level of the frames. At this stage, it will be safe to remove both frames from the excavation. Reinstatement can then continue to ground level. A trench sheet extractor and excavator is used to pull sheets from the ground. Alternatively, a vibratory hammer may be used in preference as this is a quicker and safer method of extracting sheets. All equipment should be cleaned and stacked ready for reuse or collection. Please observe the following points while using this equipment. Locate underground services before excavating. Prepare a lifting plan, assess weights correctly and use appropriately certified lifting equipment during installation and removal. Be thoroughly familiar with the user guide supplied with the equipment. Ensure all bolts, clips and pins are correctly fitted. Keep hands clear of pinch points. Only use designated lifting points for chain attachment. Ensure that all hoses are correctly connected before operating the pump. Provide protection to the edge of the excavation and use a secured ladder to access the trench. Use the restraining chains supplied to support frames at all times. Keep personnel clear of the excavator slewing zone and always use a banksman. Use a driving cap wherever possible. Inspect all components for signs of defects at the start of every shift. Do not exceed 1000 psi installation pressure. Do not over tighten the lock off valves. Do not use components and shoring fluid other than supplied by ground force. Do not move into an unsupported area at any time. Do not use excessive force during installation and removal. Do not wrap chains around the struts. Do not depressurize frame components without adequate support from backfill material being in place. 
do not attempt to forcibly drag the frame out of the ground without releasing the pressure. Do not strike the frame during excavation. And do not climb on the struts and beams. Ground Force Shoreco. Be safe and sure.